Hey guys, got a failed server today. Impero server has failed. So the server here says Impero on it. See there, the raid array is going mad. And uh, if we go ahead and look at the uh, server itself, it's not playing ball. So we've tried to recover this. We've tried to obviously uh, run it in safe mode as well. It's not working. All this server does is runs in Piro for the entire site here. So we're going to go ahead and reinstall this with a new, fresh instance of Server 2012 R2, and then go ahead and just reinstall the Impero software and services. The clients automatically pick up the server and carry on as we've left off. As you can see, your computer ran into a problem and had to restart. So I'm going to go ahead and plug in a data stick. Okay, so this drive is at fault here, the first drive, the 72 gig SAS 10K. I'm going to go ahead and change this with another identical drive, it's brand new. Then reconfigure the RAID array and get cracking with that. Okay, let's go and swap this. So we've got two hot spares here, we've never even used these, they're brand new drives. I'm going to go ahead and just swap these out now and then put it into the server again. So uh, thanks for watching these videos guys, and uh, I've got to say I'm, I'm loving the appreciation you guys are giving me at the minute, and uh, the subscribers are soon racking up, and obviously comments, and uh, the likes, and the sharing, uh, keep that going. Okay, so this is the drive that's having issues, there's an identical drive, never used, in fact this one looks more modern on the left more of like brushed aluminium to keep it cool maybe that's why maybe they realize there's a fault with it by painting it I don't know <laughs> nipple tassels <laughs> go and plonk this back in the server now we'll boot the server up configure the raid array and that will be the end of it okay drive's not in at the moment let's go ahead and put that in Drive's now in, let's boot the server up. Let's look at the drive configuration there. The status LEDs on the front and see what happens. We're filming at 2.7K today on the GoPro. It's got 10 gig of memory. It's a Xeon 2.4 gigahertz, as you'll be able to see there. Go into that and configure it. So, we want to view the logical drive. So, RAID Naughty, we're going to delete that and then reconfigure this. We're going to delete logical drive first of all. We're going to go ahead and F8 to delete that. Yes, we're going to permanently delete this data. F3. Okay, there are no RAID configurations on this server, on that controller now. Let's go ahead and create a new one. So create logical drive. We're going to do RAID 5 on this. Okay, so we want to then go ahead and make this as RAID 5 with fault tolerance. F8 to save the configuration now. We're going to then reboot the server. So the configuration is saved and go ahead and let the machine default and boot from the USB stick thumbnail drive that's connected to the front of the machine, front panel. So we're going to go ahead and restart now. We may need a driver to be able to see this configuration, um, but with Server 2012 R2, because it's newer than the server hardware itself, we should be okay and we shouldn't require any uh, driver support to see the RAID array. And you can see there all of the green lights are on the front of the controller. Status LEDs are okay, no red lights now. So it's initializing the controller now. Should see that new I should see that new RAID array we've configured. Yep, one logical drive there. We could actually virtualize this server. I think we will virtualize it in the future with new server technology that we buy. Okay, as you can see, it's booting from the USB stick now. Okay, it'll boot from my USB stick as default. There we go. Oh. Gigging it. <laughs> Gigging it. Okay, so we want the GUI. I'm not some sort of scripting coding wizard. Uh, okay, so accept the terms, and uh, it should see the RAID array as default because it's newer than 
the, the operating system is newer than the hardware it's going on to, so it should include the drivers. We're rocking up at 77% now. Get in there. Still plenty of activity on the drives, no faults found. There's our QNAP from a previous video, no errors on the drives for the backups. Installing updates. The spiral of windows, spirally. Okay, so it's asking for our local administrator password. I'm gonna go ahead and set one here. So password complexity will be on. So you have to have an uppercase letter and a, a number in there, or an asterisk or something like that. Now logging in for the first time, guys. Let's do this. I'm going to static IP address this machine. I'm going to rename the computer so it's got an actual server name of Impero, as it had before. And then enable remote desktop. Install any software that we need to put on there first. So perhaps .NET, things like that. And after that, go ahead and install the software. Impero. We're going to enable remote desktop. And the firewall. Turn that off. Turn that off. So I'm just going to turn off the passwords must meet the complexity requirement here. The local server. Next time we log out, log on again, you can change the password to whatever you want to change it to without having to worry about that. Go ahead and join this to the domain now. Okay, we've joined the domain. Let's restart the computer again, server again. So now we're going to log back into the domain rather than locally. Okay, first log on on Domain Administrator account. So what I'm doing now is I'm copying over the backup configuration files for Impero from before, from a backup server to the desktop of this machine. It's quite large, six gig, but it controls, uh, it stores all of our computers, the groups, the permissions on all of the machines. And uh, we just reinstall the software, re-import the, the groups, and it should be a backup and running without any issue whatsoever there. Okay, so now the files are copied across. Impero relies on .NET Framework 3.5, so we're installing that now through the Add Roles and Features Wizard on Server 2012. We have the Impero backup folder on the desktop here. We're going to go into Server here, and we're going to go to Updates. Let's go ahead and install Impero Server first of all. Really fast piece of software, easy to do. And there we go, has it installed successfully? So we're going to go ahead now and restore our database and get it back up and running. Over GigaNet. <laughs> Launch Imperial Server and we're going to activate it for the first time. I've moved it all. I've moved it all to here. I broke, I broke everything. Update. There we go. Client. This one. You don't have permission to run this software. <laughs> I'll be like, no! So now we're running the Impero client software because they run together. Server and client is console. It's installing now. There we go, Impero workstation is now active in the tray. Tools, restore, and then obviously select the back if you want to restore from. And there we have, now we've restored it. We've got our users and groups back in with the correct access and permissions. <laughs> so now we're going to log the client in for the first time on here the latest version. We should now see all of our rooms, which we do. There we have it. Left hand side here, we've got all of our rooms, groups, all the computers will be in that. All the staff are here. So, we're going to conclude there guys. Thanks for watching. We're done for today. That's Impero working again. Fully reinstalled server. And as always, please like and subscribe and share these videos for me and I look forward to seeing you next time. But for now, it's time to go and get a nice cup of tea.